In today's episode, you're gonna get to see a whole bunch of cars that I used to own. Hello everybody, welcome to Classic Car Chit Chat. My name is Kevin. If this is the first time you're coming to my channel, then welcome. I really appreciate you being here today. If you've been to my channel before, then thank you again for coming back. Thank you always for the comments you leave, for the thumbs up, for you subscribing, as well as hitting that notification bell so you know when the next episode is available. Today's video is a little bit different. I actually recorded it earlier in the summer when my car, the MG, this little girl, was getting repaired. So I had some time on my hands and I was clearing out some stuff and I thought it'd be kind of neat to make a video of all the cars that I've owned in the past. Many of you have already asked me for this, so I kind of put it together and I hope you kind of enjoy the trip back memory lane for me. So hop in, let's go for a drive and let's check out some of the old cars I used to have and currently still have. I thought today we would do something different. Um, since I don't have a car to talk about, um, I thought I would share with you the cars that I've owned in the past and what I currently own. I know some of you had left comments in terms of wondering what are the cars that I have. Um, so I thought I would start with a little bit of history, walk you through the cars that I have owned in the past, and a little bit of history as to what attracted me to them. So some of them are absolutely beautiful. Others are, I don't know what the heck I was thinking, and, and you'll see the whole gory detail. So join me as we go back in time and we'll go for a drive in history. So hop along, let's go for a drive. Okay, now the first photograph you see is a picture of the very first car I drove. This is my dad. It is a Triumph Dolomite 1500cc. Pretty big engine for England back in the day. I forget what year it is, but if anybody is watching from the UK, it was a K registered car, so I'm not quite sure what kind of era that makes it. But I would have been around 16, 17 when I was driving this car. My dad was a car guy. Like he would, you know, polish and wax the car. This car was a beautiful sapphire blue, was the name of the color. And he looked after it. And I think just watching him and his passion about cars rubbed off on me because I'm the same way. I, I, I like to keep my cars and I like to look after them. And uh, so, yeah, my first memories back in those days, there was nobody parking on our street. Now it's a different story. But uh, anyhow, them were the days. So the next photo you see is the first car I owned here in Canada, and that is the Toyota Corolla. It was a 1982 model. I bought it in 1986, so that's going back many, many years. And I kept it for a number of years. And this was the car that I drove. Um, it was reliable, it was practical, it was all of those things. It was nothing to look at, but I tried to customize it. As you can see, there's even wire wheels on the thing, not real ones, but you know, the kind. And I even sort of tinted the rear quarter panel to make it look a little bit more me customized right so that was my uh, my very first car uh, in Canada after that things got a lot better I graduated university I got my first job and then I bought myself a 1984 Pontiac Trans Am this car was gorgeous it was this gloss black finish and I think I would wax it all the time I gotta tell you a story though. My wife doesn't even know this, but um, one day I was out there and I, I, I'd gone to, 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 to polish it or, or whatever at the, at the place and um, I, I didn't have any cloth with me. <laughs> and the only cloth I had was my underwear. So I went in the car, I quickly got my underwear out, I took my underwear and I used it to wipe down the car because there was a smudge in it and I couldn't have that in my car. So. That was my Trans Am. It was an 84. I bought it in 1988. I got it for a steal, I think, relatively speaking. I know the person who had it uh, before me uh, was desperate to sell it. He needed the money. I think he sort of went overboard. But I was lucky enough to, to get this car, so I loved it to bits. I drove it everywhere. 
Um, there's a picture here of my nephew, Ricky. He's a grown man now. He has a kid of his own uh, about the same age. And uh, again, it was a, a wonderful car. The next photograph is my dad. So this is him cleaning the car. Like we would go on, on the weekends and uh, clean the car and, you know, at, at the, the car wash places, just kind of clean inside and outside. There's a beautiful Lincoln beside it. I've, I've never quite noticed that one before. Um, this is a picture of me, uh, again, washing the car, cleaning the car. It's what I do best, right? So I enjoyed that. And these are all back in 1988. The next photo is of my wife. So we had gotten married then just at that time. So she actually took a driving test in this car. And it's not the easiest car to drive. I mean, she could barely see out the front. So we had to keep the front headlights on all the time just so she could see where the front end of the car is. But she passed her driving test and it was an awesome car. It leaked water everywhere. It had the tea roof and every time it would rain, it would leak water. and. At that time in our lives, we lived in uh, London, Ontario. So we would drive it even in the winter. We didn't even have snow tires or any of that stuff. So, you know, it's amazing what you can get by with. But I love the car dearly. This one is a picture of both my mom and dad. My mom and dad was a tiny little thing. She's not even five foot tall. So sadly, they both passed away. But I know when she used to sit in the car, especially in the back seat, she didn't even know she was there. She was like a little kid uh, in the back. Um, the next photo is my car decorated with little pom-poms and it was used when uh, my wife and I got married as our little uh, wedding car back in the day. Ah, this is a cool one. The next photo you see here is of, uh, of my work vehicle. So I used to work at uh, Bell Canada. Let me put that one back in here. This is a better photo. The good-looking guy standing beside it is me. And uh, so this was the K car. This was our standard offering right beside it is my Trans Am that you see in the parking lot, the apartment building that I used to live at. Uh, and uh, the K car was actually a really good car. It was an amazing car in the winter. It drove like a tank. I was really quite impressed with it. Uh, I think the beacon on top is, is bigger than the actual car itself, but pretty awesome car. And then things got changed. Um, we had to buy a house and in order to get enough money for a down payment, I sold my Trans Am. I think I really cried. I was quite upset parting with her and I ended up getting this Mercury Cougar. I don't know what I was thinking. It was cheap. I bought it because, hey, it's all I could afford and I needed the money to, to buy the house. So I bought that in 1990. I had my trans for two years and um, I kept this car surprisingly for a long time, for three years. Uh, it was good, it was comfortable. It was like, I don't know, it was soft and it was, uh, it was, it was okay, but nothing to write home about. So as I said, good car, reliable, nothing really happened to it. And then I had to get something decent. So I sold that one and I ended up getting a Z24. This, this was the Chevy Cavalier Z24. It was a 1988 model. I bought it in 92. And uh, great little car, quite peppy. Uh, it was a 2.8 liter V6 engine. Uh, and again, it was, it was fun to drive. It was nice to keep uh, polished and it looked good, especially being uh, the, the red color. And uh, I, I drove it for a number of years. I had that one for about three years. And then my son was born and then I had a problem because when I went to the hospital to pick him up in his little car seat, Neil, it's your fault, um, the car seat actually wouldn't fit in the car. Even with the seat folded down, I could not get the car seat. There wasn't enough space. Uh, it wasn't designed for a car seat. So next thing you know, I had to go sell the car and bought a Dodge Shadow. Hmm. Reliable family vehicle. That's exactly what it is. Um, it was relatively cheap. It was a 1993 model. I bought it in 92, so it's about two years old. Two liter, sorry, 2.2 liter four cylinder. And you know what? It, it did the job. It was four seats. It was reliable. It was good in the winter. It was just a practical car. Not something I, I absolutely love, but you know what? I drove it for 10 years. We, we kept that car. 
And then we needed a second car. And things started to change a little bit, a little bit sportier. So I bought my Suzuki Swift GTI. It was a 1989. This was a cool car. It was so peppy. It was only a four-cylinder uh, little car, 1.3 liter, good on gas, sticks, uh, stick shift. So it was fun to drive around. And I had so much fun with this. And during this time, I was uh, using it um, to deliver pizza and all kinds of things like that, too. So it was kind of a fun car. And uh, I really, really enjoyed driving it. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a, a lot of fun. Then um, here's a picture of my son, Neil. And oh, what a gorgeous baby. And he's sitting there in the uh, um, in my little uh, uh, Suzuki uh, GTI and uh, for him it was like a toy wasn't much bigger than than he was then I don't know what the heck I was thinking there was a, a movement to get minivans so I thought I would get a minivan too I hated this thing this was a 1987 Ford Aerostar it was actually owned by the father of one of my work colleagues so she said oh my dad's got this great uh, minivan it has hardly been used. It only had 60 odd kilometers, 60,000 kilometers rather, and um, it was 10 years old, which is mileage was nothing. And uh, anyway, so I bought it. It was a good price. I bought it. We needed something practical. And I remember going to visit my sister-in-law in, -law in uh, Princeton, New Jersey. So we drove from uh, from Toronto, Canada. Uh, to New Jersey and it was overheating. Um, it was a horrendous car. And while we were in New York, we went to see uh, the Empire State Building and do all those touristy things that everybody does. When we came back, we noticed that the side window was smashed. Somebody had broken into the car and they'd stolen, I think, my camera and a couple of other things too back then. But um, what can you do? I didn't keep this car long, as I say. I had it for about a year. I had to get rid of it. It was a horrible, ugly, not pleasant car to drive. The next car was something that my son really loved. It was a, a Ford Taurus. Uh, it was a 97, terrible transmission. Had it replaced, uh, transmission that is. But we drove that for uh, a few years. Um, it was reliable. It was kind of kind of fun. Um, you know, it was it was practical. I guess I gotta show you this picture. This is a picture of my son sitting in the back. He doesn't look very happy there, but he had one of those seats in the back. So technically it could seat eight people, which is kind of cool. Not that we had eight in the family. After that, uh, my second son was born. So here's a picture of uh, Neil, the elder one, and Nikhil, the, the younger one. And with my Pontiac Montana EXT, the extended version. So this one uh, was a pretty decent car. We really enjoyed it. It was good for a family. It was comfortable. It had the captain's chairs and things like that in there. It was, it was a reliable, practical car. Nothing else. Nothing that's, else. That's, that's, that's all it was. The next, the next car we bought was my very first brand new car. Uh, so this was a 2016, sorry, 2006 rather, Hyundai Accent 5. So five door hatchback. The blue color was, of course, Leicester City, but also Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, they're a team. And it was a 2006 model. The gentleman standing next to my wife, if you know Nav Bhatia here in Toronto, any of you that are Canadian, he's a big Raptors fan, super, super nice guy. This was his dealership. The gentleman standing beside my wife is his actual uh, brother. And very, very nice also. So we had this car uh, for many years. Sadly, it was in an accident um, and we lost the car. Uh, it was totaled. Uh, luckily, my son was driving. He was absolutely fine and that's all that mattered. But a really, really good car. Uh, I got to say, Hyundai's well-made. It didn't really cost me anything other than, you know, just your regular oil changes. But other than that, didn't spend a cent on this car. Really, really good car. Uh, fun to drive as well practical good in the winter here's a picture of again my eldest son neil and my younger one nikhil with my um, uh, accent uh, hyundai accent then i wanted to get something else so this car i love to bits this is my bmw 528i 2000 year model it was gorgeous um, it was comfortable, it was beautiful, it drove like a dream, it was smooth. 
Um, the power curve on this vehicle was extraordinary. You can just keep putting your foot down and it would keep going. There was no shake. The paint, uh, everything about this vehicle was just amazing. Really, really good car and I really love this. Here's a picture of me again cleaning the car as I always did, keeping her looking polished and shiny and everything else. There was this beautiful titanium silver. It was the, it was the M package on the car. It wasn't the M edition, sadly, but it was, uh, it was nice. Um, it's actually, during that time, uh, hang on a second, I missed a page. Yep, no, I'm good. Uh, during that time, I actually bought the MG. So that's, uh, you've seen lots of pictures of the MG. So it is a 73. I bought it in 2012. So I've had it for a number of years now. And uh, again, I love that car. Uh, when I bought it, I'm just looking at the, my notes here. It had 21,000 miles on it. It's, uh, it's now got 28,000, so now we're in 2021. So you can see, I mean, I don't drive it that much. I take care of it nine years, so, you know, where does the time go? But uh, this is a picture of uh, an event, uh, British Car Day, at Bronte Creek Park uh, in Burlington. So this was my little car with all the MGs uh, back in the day, before COVID. Um, so that was my MG. Uh, what else did I have? Oh, yes. So I'm gonna skip a few of the photos of the MG and then I'm gonna show you another really, really good car. This was a Subaru Impreza 2012. It was a four wheel drive sport model. Uh, we bought it in 2015, uh, it's three years old. It was dark cherry uh, in color. Amazing car, amazing car. I know Neil really loved it too. He didn't wanna part with it, but we kinda had to. So um, it was getting up there. Really, really good car, great in the winter, fun to drive, looked good. The color was something else, like really was extraordinary in color. When it was clean, she looked beautiful. Really nice, uh, really nice color. Oh, they're kind of stuck together, sorry about that. And then I sold my Subaru and I ended up getting a Mercedes. So this is the Mercedes C230 4Matic, four wheel drive. Fun car, really, really nice car. The color was something different, and I really, really like this uh, vehicle. It was a great car to drive, not as fast as the BMW, I'll be honest, but it was really grand, and it was fun, and it was a great, comfortable car, reliable. And I bought this um, soon after I lost my Hyundai Accent. Like, obviously, throughout, throughout this, I owned two cars at the same time, so keep it up is a little bit of a challenge but I wanted to get something that was strong and sturdy and safe and uh, I think the Mercedes is as good as it gets so uh, really really good car. Um, the next car I'm going to show you live so the next car I have I have both of them still uh, one is my Subaru Crosstrek it's the hybrid edition it's a 2014 edition um, really really good it's my go-to car very very reliable. Um, no problems. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that actually. Here, here's an interesting story. So during COVID uh, last year, one of the sensors in the transmission uh, had failed and it created a check engine light, which drives me insane. I took it to the dealership. I was still under the warranty. And again, it was like good news and bad news. And I said, okay, tell me the bad news. Well, the bad news is that there is a failure in the sensor and we can't get the part. I said, okay, and the good news? Good news is we have a brand new transmission that Subaru Canada has available if you want to switch out the entire transmission. And I said, you're kidding, right? No, they actually did it. They replaced the entire transmission. When I got the bill, it was $13,000 total, labor included, and it didn't cost me a cent. Thank God it was under the warranty. Thank God for Subaru's policies to make their customers happy. So really, really good. Uh, I still have the car and I'll take you on a little bit of a tour of that yeah, very shortly. Short, anyway, then I ended and up the getting a uh, Ford Fusion Energy. This is the plug-in uh, hybrid. Now, this is my first foray into electric cars and uh, this was a really, really good car. Very, very reliable. The fit and finish of this car was equivalent to, I'd say, the Mercedes. Like, it was really well built together, put together. It was solid. It was kind of a, a neat car. 
Um, and I did like the fact that you could plug it in and I got about a 37 kilometer electric range, which is not great, um, but it was good and I used it for a lot of the driving that I do for work. So I really, really liked it. Um, and I had to just sort of trade it in. And then I bought the Chevy Volt, which I'm going to show you uh, live, if you will, and kind of walk you through why I love uh, my Volt. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that little trip down memory lane. So now join me as we look at my current cars. They're not clean, I'll be honest. They're nothing like my MG, but I try and keep them a little bit clean. But at least I'll kind of show you what I like and what I don't like about the car. And uh, you get a sense as to what are the vehicles that I have. Okay, thank you. Okay, everybody, welcome back. So now I'm trying my gimbal to see if I'm any good at this thing. Don't know what I'm doing, but here we go. So this is the cars that I had mentioned. So this is my Subaru Crosstrek. It's a 2014 and this is my Chevy Volt, which is a 2018. But let's start with this one first. So as you can see, it is a hatchback and great car, right? It says elevated Subies here because my son is a member of the Subaru Car Club here in uh, Toronto and great little car really really practical and tons of space in the back oh i got my soil in there but as you can see with a hatchback nothing fancy just really reliable and practical um again just a regular car the subarus make practical cars i mean they don't worry about luxury and all those kinds of things not really necessary gets you from a to b really safely and with our canadian winters you do definitely need a good reliable winter car so this is kind of our go-to car and the mileage isn't really that high it's only got 80k on it uh, kilometers and not a lot when you think about how old the car is it has a sunroof it is just a really good practical car being a hybrid as well the electric battery is under this panel over here so it it's not like you can drive distances um, while using electric per se but at least when you are in traffic it really does help to cut down how much the uh, the engine is uh, is turning on so that is my Subaru Crosstrek XV right great car really practical look it's even got one of those uh, hitch things and look yellow uh, lights as well that's something my son did so it's all stock nothing else nothing extra oh the thing that is extra are these little um covers on the side of the the windows really looks cool uh, and again my son is doing bits and thing bits and bobs to it to to make it customized i kind of like this as well um it does help to protect the front from stone chips and things like that but really good reliable car no issues uh, other than the transmission like i mentioned okay so that's my current car that i use on a day-to-day -day basis this one is really good i really really like the chevy volt it is a good practical day-to-day -day car um, see inside again this is the premier edition so it's got all the bells and whistle, uh, whistles including self-parking don't know what the heck that is tried it once it felt a bit freaky but as you can see even you get 107 kilometers electric range when it's fully charged in the summer in the winter not as much uh, I think we were getting about 65 70 um, here again the stuff in the back that needs to be taken to uh, um, dropped off at the post office really good practical car it's a hatchback so again tons of space and that was the one complaint I did have about my uh, Ford Fusion I mean it was really nicely built car but the trunk space was terrible this one is really really good it's such a reliable uh, car that you can use day-to-day -day. groceries driving around the city um again really nice cool car um i enjoy it the the fact that it is so good on fuel is remarkable um there is a sensor in there apparently that if your gas has been sitting 
in the car for such a long time, you do get the, a warning saying it's going to burn some of the gas before it goes stale. So that's one of the the issues. But other than that, like you know, for day to day driving, for everything you need to do, being a, a hatchback, there's no range envy issue uh, either. So you're never concerned that will you have enough fuel to get you from point A to B. I think combined electric and uh, gas engine, you could drive forever. And what I like about it is the regeneration. So there are paddles on the uh, the side of uh, the car, um, or the steering wheel rather, that when you press those, it's like it's engaging the built-in braking system. So you're regenerating a lot of that uh, electricity that would have been uh, wasted, you're getting that back in to, uh, to the car and you're saving, uh, saving a lot of that battery power. But uh, it's funny how both cars just happen to be white. It's not like I've, I've got this thing about white cars, but it does look good. I do like the car, really, really fun car to, to drive for, all, for every reason. I mean, I, I wish they still made this car because I think the having the gas electric uh, engine is the best combination in so many ways. Um, you don't have to literally worry about wherever you're going. You just get in the car and drive, and if you run out of electric power, you just uh, put some more gas in it, and uh, you are good to go. So there you have it, in a nutshell. Both of my cars, in addition to my MG, which is my little toy, which hopefully you'll see in the next episode.